Okay, so I have an announcement today. Oh. We are hiring a new couple versus cardboard assistant. Why would we do that? Because then we'd have a couple versus cardboard assistant. Well, I know where we could find one. Find an assistant? Yeah. Where? In the new Balfour Expansion Expansion. Hi, I'm Glenn. I'm Cheryl. And this is Couple versus Cardboard. So what is this? It's like some kind of like expansion, like an expansion of an expansion. Yeah, the expansion expansion, the Belfort expansion, expansion expansion. Jinx. Which is a great name, by the way. That's so fantastic. I love that. I know you do. Yeah. You were really excited about it. I was. Like checking the mailbox every time you left or returned home, like three to four times a day. I, who could know if our mailman was a ninja? Could have airdropped the mail? Absolutely. Par avion. I have no, no comeback for that. What, what's included is basically uh, three kinds of components. Right. Three major kinds of components that are included, uh, and then some changes to the base, to the, to the initial setup, and that's what's gonna make up the Belfort expansion expansion. So why don't we talk about those just a little bit. Great. One of the major new uh, mechanics, yeah. and that's gonna be the assistance. Right. Now this is a role selection mechanic, uh, and what that means is basically every turn during the calendar phase, someone is going to get a, an assistant. So you go in reverse order, you just you start with the last player mm -hmm. and go back through the, the first, and what, what they basically do is they give you a super powerful ability that turn. So for example, it could be something like the Djinn, which is one of my favorites, which lets you cannibalize some of your points and get resources for it. Are there any other ones that you really like? Uh, I mean, the Giant's cool. Yeah, the Giant is so awesome. So he just lets you, basically by the end, you're plopping down three extra um, workers in one resource. So. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, which is also worth noting too that they get more powerful as the seasons go on, meaning after every scoring round, they become more powerful. Right. So at the beginning of the game, the giant gives you one extra resource, one extra worker in the, in the kind of resource area. But by the end, he's worth three, which is crazy awesome, yeah. And before, there were some definite benefits to going last. Um, for example, being able to see what everybody else was doing ahead of time. But now it really, like, there's a very tangible reason why you might want to go last. And I think that that contrast between, like, going last to get the best assistant or going first so you can get things the like... The best placement. I think that contrast is incredibly interesting. Right. So then the third part... Yes. ...is the expansion permits. Basically what it is, is for all of your buildings, there is a permit for an expansion you can purchase. Use your assistant to purchase the permit instead of for their ability. So you kind of pass on them, you flip them over and you say, I'm going to get a permit for something that I've already built. So you already have to have like the inn built, then you can get the pool permit. Um, and then what after that, you know, have to build the pool so you're spending workers and resources depending on what the you know expansion is for the building um, depends on what things you're gonna have to use to build that and then the expansions give you additional points so um, and they're all different one of them gives you extra points for sets of workers so if you have a gnome uh, elf and a dwarf you get one point, and then if you have three sets of those, you get three points. Right. Um, one of them lets you get, gives you an extra point for every district you have right, a building in. Right, that's the chapel, in. right? Right. Yeah. Um, uh, it sounds like they would be then really just really easy throughout the game to get a whole bunch of points that you wouldn't have been able to in the base game. It does sound like that, doesn't it? Uh, a little bit. It's not like that. Okay, so tell me more. Um, they end up being really expensive. You have to you have to use a worker or two workers during the placement 
to just be able to potentially build this expansion on your turn. Yeah, which sometimes costs resources at that point. At that point, like money or whatever, stone. Cards, or... stone. Yeah. All kinds of different all stuff. All kinds of things. Yeah. And then also during, you have to use an action yeah. to spend more resources to actually build it. Right. So you've used workers and resources that could potentially have gone into building something else and getting majority a majority in a district. Right. So you're doing this whole um, like cost um, benefit kind of balance with it and it just to me it feels like they end up being really really expensive and challenge like hard to actually build yeah like, they're not that hard to acquire right but they're hard to actually make useful and get points for right they don't always feel worth it to me to okay. spend all that but like I said I actually in talking through this have some ideas about how to to, to try to use them more effectively. Yeah, yeah. They just don't, they feel very costly to me, is what mm. they feel like. Yeah, because they end up kind of using a lot of resources and you're not sure about the payout. Right. I really like the expansion permits. And what I really like about the expansion permits is it's just that, it's it could be that, that tiny boon which pushes you over the edge over your opponents. And I, I, I think that's, I think, I know that's where we disagree on this one, that's but hard. I totally think that it, it could be that benefit that you wouldn't normally have. They also can change kind of the fundamental way you end up playing with some of the buildings that you would have yeah. normally. So for example, uh, where something like a keep would have been really good to get in at the very end game, Tip the scale. Yeah, as as your last thing, really tip the scale at the end. What it really does is now it encourages you to play the keep earlier in the game where you normally wouldn't have mm -hmm. because it gives you points based on the whole thing. And something like the library where before it was just kind of a, I want more cards so I can have better buildings out. Now it has a unique thing where you get points based on how many cards you have. Right. Which I think is really, really interesting. So there's, there's two, yeah. right? Changes to the initial. Setup. Yeah, so what? Are, so what's the first one? The first one is that you start with six points. Wow, that sounds like awesome. Like, I'm starting with six points, and so that's great. But you have to pay taxes from the beginning. What? And on top of that, you start in the second round, which means that instead of there being uh, three rounds during kind of the initial spring phase, you're starting with there being just one. It basically means the second turn is a scoring phase. It really sneaks up on you, even right from the get-go, uh, into the scoring round. And in addition to that, it also, the taxes really pelt you early on. And so it definitely changes the feel of Belfort. Just resources are a lot harder to acquire. Yeah. Because your gold is going into taxes, yeah. Yeah. and so then you're not able to place workers. You know, you're not able to place as many workers in places that will be really beneficial for your, for your acquiring resources or for doing those things. For a box that ends up being basically the size of coup or cheaty mages, you know, kind of a very small box. What you end up getting is a ton of new game. We talked a lot about, in our last review of Belfort itself, of it being about making critical decisions. One of the things that you suddenly realize with the expansion is that it blows the variety of decisions you can be making just out of the water. Change it so where the guilds aren't necessarily the whole focus, but they become one thing that you can be working on. Right. And I think in addition to that, it, it also makes it so, for example, if you get that one powerful guild, it doesn't mean that that is the thing that everyone is trying to go for, because there can be, in effect, multiple strategies if there's a particularly powerful assistant, for example. Right. I think what it does is it adds a level of sophistication to Belfort that is much deeper and much richer than it was before. It feels a lot more, it feels a lot shorter and it feels um, more intense. Even though it's not actually shorter, it feels shorter and it feels more intense than the original Belfort. Because often you'll probably be used to playing Belfort a certain way, 
and it will disrupt a lot of that or at least kind of change the way you look at a lot of that it is going to be one of those things where you probably should play it a few times before you kind of make a final verdict so i would say in addition to that i don't necessarily recommend if you're just buying belfort going out and buying the expansion expansion day one like i would totally recommend playing a just a ton of belfort play it until you're purple and then try it tr then grab the new one yeah, I like it. I like the expansion. Done. That's it. Have a good week, <laughs> folks. Yes. Okay. I particularly like the assistance. That part I think is really fun. And I think it's probably a little bit more straightforward for me and that's why I can appreciit. Okay. The expansions I think are growing on me, but I still don't get them quite yet. And so I think it'll be fun to play around with some different strategies. Yeah. But I feel like I like Belfort original and Belfort expansion and would still play either one yeah. uh, equally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's totally fair. You guys need to do something. Yeah, they should do something. What are you going to do? Play awesome games. You should keep playing awesome games. We'll Thanks. see you guys next time. Bye. I think the assistant, well, hang on, I don't want to be touching my chest. That's me again. <laughs> so what do you think of the assistant? So the thing that I think about the assistants are that when I put this thing over my mouth like this, I talk in a voice like this. I become an old timey announcer when I put my hand over my mouth. Extra, extra, read all about it, see? Hindenburg crashes.